Good morning, this is Jason Salemi. I'm an Associate Professor of Epidemiology at the University of South Florida College of Public Health. And today I wanna to tackle a few issues related to a question that I received from an acquaintance who's genuinely trying to digest the information that's provided. And here's a lot about the increasing case counts being primarily due to uh, more expansive testing. Other people say it's due to the fact that the virus is spreading throughout the population because we've relaxed uh, our mitigation efforts. And so this individual is looking at the official uh, Florida Department of Health's uh, data dashboard, a very nice dashboard. But they were looking up here at the, uh, the top right of your screen, the percent positive for laboratory testing and noticing that all of the measures are under 5%. And then if you look overall for the state, it's again, right around 5.7%. And so said, you know, what, what's all the fuss? Isn't this just due to more expansive testing? And so that really prompted me to cover a couple of different issues related to digesting this information. Um, and I'll apologize ahead of time. I have some construction going on outside of my uh, community. So you might hear uh, a backing up a wheel loader as uh, my son would get excited about. Uh, but back to the issues. So issue number one is uh, providing overall or six week averaged measures over time instead of daily measures. And again, what I'm talking about here is the proportion of all tests uh, for COVID-19 that are positive um, or the number of people. So we'll get into that a little bit later. But this is more about do we provide overall or kind of averaged measures versus giving you actual daily measures. And so again, if you go to the official dashboard for the Florida Department of Health, the overall for the entire state, since they've been tracking this information, the overall proportion of tests that have returned back positive is 5.7%. And here's what they provide in terms of a temporal sequencing of that percent positive. So you can see the most recent data point they had, at least as of this morning, was for June 7th, but this is not the actual value on June 7th. This is the value on June 7th and the preceding six weeks combined, right? Again, if you look at some other information that's provided on the Florida Department of Health's official uh, dashboard, you can see, again, on a weekly basis, how many people tested negative, how many people tested positive. And again, it's just, it's kind of hard to digest outside of the fact that most people are testing negative. It's hard to understand what's happening over time. There's also another dashboard that has been produced. It is not the official one from the Florida Department of Health. It's called Florida's Community Coronavirus Dashboard. It's based on a lot of the same data. And again, what you see here is although you get a lot of granular information at the level of the county, the temporal um, you know, sequence of the new positive cases and the percent that's positive, I'll just say it's hard to digest, again, what's happening, uh, certainly for the untrained eye. And so the reason I have a problem with this kind of averaged approach is the following. So assume for now, even though it's not the truth, assume that we have the same number of tests that we're able to perform in Florida on a daily basis. So the volume of testing that we're doing is not changing over time. So let's say in the last two weeks, let's say a while back, we started to relax uh, mitigation efforts, and we're genuinely starting to see uh, more community spread of the virus. So in the last two weeks, the truth is that 15% of people who are testing are testing positive. Now, if you looked at the previous four weeks before that, it was 5% on average. And so what happens if you're reporting today based only on the last six weeks and not what happened today or what happened in the last two weeks, what you would report is 8.3%. So that is a valid measure of what's happened in the past six weeks, but it sort of hides what's happening in the past two weeks, which should alert us, you know, that, that something, you know, we're, we're trending in the wrong direction, right? So again, it kind of masks what's going on more recently. And again, if we reported that number on this chart, that 8.3%, again, it seems to kind of hide what's been going on more recently. Now, I fully understand that we tend to not report daily rates. So this is from my, my own dashboard that I've made publicly available in terms of the number of cases daily over time. And you can see that those numbers kind of increase, decrease if you actually track them on a daily basis. So even I provide that red line, which is kind of saying, okay, let's smooth things out 
and for each day, let's not look only at what happened on that day, but the previous six days before that, right? So the seven day moving average. And again, I, I think it's important to at least provide both, not only the smoothed out estimate, but also the daily numbers. And again, notice that I did not go back six weeks. I only went back six days. And again, this is not testing. This is number of cases. But again, I understand the reason why we average things out over time. And so to their credit, the Florida Department of Health, though not on their dashboard that they make available, they do make publicly available these COVID-19 data reports. And on page two out of 1,482 pages, um, you can find this information that is reporting the percent positive on a daily basis. So again, this was yesterday's report. The, the report for today has not come out yet, but you can see on 616 and 617, we were above 10% of all people who were tested, testing positive. Um, and, and again, it gives you a good snapshot of what's happened uh, approximately in, in the last two weeks, right? But nothing before that. So again, they do provide it, but it's not readily accessible on the dashboard. So again, a little bit uh, you know, difficult to understand what's transpiring with the percent positivity. And so again, just like I do for the number of cases and am fully in favor of providing the daily and the averaged out estimates, here's what I've done. I've gone through those PDF reports and I've taken those daily rates of positivity. And for now, I'll just ask you to focus on the blue line. This is actually that percent positive on a daily basis. And so I've, I've shaded in a light gray, the positivity when it gets above 5% and in a darker gray above 10%. Because again, I think those are kind of our warning symbols. The, the WHO recommends uh, less than 5% for reopening. Other measures that I've seen is less than 10%. And so again, just more recently, what you can see we've been trending on a daily basis is starting to get into a more disconcerting range. There are a lot of factors that goes into this percent positivity, um, depending on who's getting tested, how expansive testing it is in certain areas. But again, as we're tracking this more recently, not only have we seen this, the increase in the number of cases, but also in the percent of those people who are tested who are testing positive. So issue number two is what I would call about data aggregation and the difference between reporting case positivity and test positivity. So forget the crudeness of my examples, but hopefully this will help people to understand uh, what underlies both of these and what the, the important difference is. So very simply speaking, let's say on today, June 19th, we have four people who were tested, right? Three of those people tested negative, one person tested positive. So what would be reported by the Florida Department of Health? Well, one positive person, three negative people, that's four total people tested. And so the case positivity rate is one out of four people who have tested positive or 25%. Pretty easy to understand. It's a pretty simple number. And notice that I'm using people as kind of my, my unit of analysis here. So let's say something different happens, right? What happens if a person is tested twice in the same day? right? They are counted only once. And the Florida Department of Health in that big PDF document, they say that, right? So on our daily estimates of case positivity, if a person is tested twice and has two negative results, they're only counted once in these estimates, which is a good thing. At the same time, if a person tests both positive and negative in the same day, they're also only counted once, and it's their positive test result that is actually counted. So again, given this information, we would say there is one positive person, the one at the, at the bottom. There are three negative people. That's four total people tested. And again, the case positivity rate is one in four or 25%. So again, that's why I feel pretty comfortable right now with the way that the Florida Department of Health is reporting their daily estimates of case positivity. So now I want to talk about the data aggregation. I mentioned that was part of what I thought could be a problem as these data are combined. So let's say, again, at the top left of your screen now is that same information I just gave to you on June 19th, what happened, right? So let's draw a couple of lines here and let's say, well, what happened on June 18th? Okay. I also had four people tested on June 18th. I had the same kind of issues with the same person being uh, tested more than once, but again, they're only counted once in that daily estimate. In this case, my, my case positivity rate on June 18th, since I have just basically zero out of four total people who tested positive, is 0%. 
But notice that the last two people on June 18th are the same individuals who were tested on June 19th. So this woman tested negative on June 18th and negative on June 19th. This person, this man, tested negative on June, 8th, June 18th and ended up testing positive on June 19th. So what happens when we now try and say something about both June 18th and 19th at the same time? Here's how I believe the data are being aggregated. So we had one positive test, right? So we had, again, being clear, we had one positive test from June 19th, no positive test from June 18th, and so that's one total positive test. We had seven negative tests, again, you know, not counting within the same day. This would only be counted as one negative test. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven, right? So seven negative tests. That's eight total tests that are performed and a test positivity rate of one out of eight or 12.5%. Now notice again, because that, that's the way the data were aggregated, but we could have aggregated it based on people and not tests. Okay, so again, using that same time frame, I could have said, this guy tested positive, right? If I'm aggregating this information and I'm trying to summarize what happened to this gentleman, he tested positive. There were five people, right, who tested negative, right? So again, if we're talking about people now, these five individuals, when I lump the information on June 18th and 19th together, that's five people who tested negative. And so there were six total people tested across those days. And so now my case positivity rate is one out of six people, or 16.7%. Notice the difference. These are two ways that states and people you know, aggregate this information, but notice that they come to different conclusions. And almost every time, the case positivity rate, so if you base it on the number of people that test positive, that is always going to be higher than the test positivity rate. And so again, just being a little bit, you know, taking this a step further, and again, it's very simple, very low numbers, so the math is simple, but let's say now we're trying to aggregate what happened over the past two months. And so over the past two months now, um, you know, these are different test results on different days. So let's say this woman tested uh, yesterday negative and the day before negative. These two people were only tested on one of the days in the past two months. Let's say this gentleman down at the bottom over the past two months had six different days that he was tested and tested negative on all of those days. So again, the way that you could aggregate this information is as follows, right? We had one positive test result, right, this guy, and we had 15 negative tests, right? So we can just add up all of the, the negative signs here, right? So that's 16 total tests that were performed. The test positivity rate is one out of 16 or 6.3%. But again, if we base this off of people and not the number of tests, and we're focusing in on what proportion of our population in terms of people are testing positive, we could you know, accurately do it this way. There's one positive person, there's five negative people, and so six total people tested. Again, that case positivity rate is one out of six people, or 16.7%. And so I think the more data that we begin to aggregate over time, if we use the method up above, the degree of underestimation of the true case positivity rate by using the test positivity rate is uh, that, that difference becomes much larger. And so you kind of underestimate it. So maybe two different measures that are part of the picture. I personally like the case positivity rate. I like to know what proportion of our population is testing positive. So the degree to which you can get at this number at the bottom and at least supplement the current number at the top with that number provides a more complete picture. And so the other dashboard that has been produced by a former Department of Health employee tries to hint at this. So this is just uh, that dashboard's uh, information for Hillsborough County. And again, I'm not going to talk about the legitimacy or the accuracy of their ability to deduplicate information on people and actually get at the case positivity rate. But here's the difference. So they're saying this is what's reported now in Hillsborough County overall. It's a 4.9% test positivity rate. But if you were actually able to unduplicate at the level of the person, it would be 8.5%, right? So again, that's a big difference in terms of how we're um, looking at the information for Hillsborough County. And so um, again, another thing that, that it has been reported is being done, which um, again, you, it's another way of looking at the data, is the following. So um, 
if a person tests positive on two separate days, right, so they're just tracking them over time after they tested positive, the way that this measure is being calculated apparently is that person who tested positive is only counted once in the in the numerator, right? So again, it, it, it kind of the numerator or the positive ones is at the level of the person. Once a person tests positive, they're only counted once. But all of the negative test results, even if it's multiple for the same person, are being included in the denominator. So again, if you look at the percent positive rate, that's 5.9%. And again, going back and comparing to what the case positivity rate would be here, it's just a dramatic difference. So I know this was kind of quick, but I hope that this hopes to at least uh, un helps to understand what kind of measures are being used to track this and how you can come to very different pictures depending on which measure you use. And so again, that's why at least right now on a daily basis, I, I have no problem, I think on a daily basis, what is reported by the Florida Department of Health in their PDF um, is essentially the case positivity rate using lab viral tests. And so that's what I will continue to kind of document on a daily basis and make available here because I think at least in addition to what's on the Florida Department of Health's dashboard, in those PDF documents, in the community coronavirus dashboard that's been created, I think this helps to supplement that information. And at least to, to my knowledge, this information providing this longitudinal daily assessment going back to the beginning um, of time when, when the Department of Health started to report this information, uh, I think is of value. So that's it. Thanks for your time. Have a great day.